On this video, we will talk about the surface area of cylinder, cones, and sphere. So let's get started. Let's start by analyzing a cylinder. So here we have a cylinder on the left. And the way that we're going to be defining our lateral area is that the lateral area of a cylinder is going to be equivalent to the circumference of the base times the height of the cylinder. So given a cylinder, if we find the circumference of the base, and we multiply by the height of the cylinder, that's going to be equivalent to the lateral area of the cylinder. But how come that is true? And again, the lateral area is just the section that surrounds our cylinder horizontally. So how come this section is defined as just being the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, times the height of the circle? I'm sorry, the height of the cylinder. So how come that is true? Well, let's take a look at the following. So here we have a small animation for our cylinder. So what we're going to concentrate right now is this blue section right here, which is the lateral area. So if we flatten our cylinder, so we're going to, that's the base. That's the base. And now let's take a look at what's exactly going to happen here on our blue section, which is the lateral area. If we flatten this out, Notice that if we completely flatten it out, it becomes a rectangle. So now the area of this lateral section or the lateral area is nothing more than the area of a rectangle, which is equivalent to base times height. But if we go back a little bit now, and we go exactly to the section, notice this blue region right here. I'm sorry, purple. Notice this purple region right here. This is the circumference of the cylinder. And if we flatten this out, notice what's going to happen to this circumference of the cylinder or the circle. If we flatten this out, notice that the circumference of the circle, which is the base, that's exactly also the base of our rectangle. Let's do it one more time. So here we have our cylinder. And if we know that this is still the circumference of the upper circle, if we flatten this out, Notice that that's equivalent to just being the base of the rectangle. So now the area of this blue section, it's a rectangle, where the base of this rectangle is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, and the height is just the same height of the cylinder. So let's just do it one more time, all the way from the beginning. So here we have our cylinder. We open it. And again, notice that if we continue to open it, it just becomes the rectangle whose base is the circumference, 2 pi r, and whose height is the height of the cylinder. So due to those two properties right there, then we can define uh, the lateral area as being the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r times the height. For the surface area, well, the surface area is going to be equivalent to the lateral area plus the area of the top and the area of the bottom. But since the area of the top is a circle and the area of the bottom is a circle as well. So now this becomes 2 times the area of the base, which again, the base is a circle. So now the circle is being defined as pi r squared plus the lateral area, where the lateral area is 2 pi r h. So this is the explicit way of defining a cylinder. Now let's move, in, let's move on to cones and let's start by defining the lateral area. So the lateral area of a cone, and again, the lateral area is just the area that surrounds the figure. It's equivalent to half the circumference of the base times the slant height. So given this cone, H will represent the height of the cone. R will represent the radius of the base. And L is what we call the slant height or the height that is slanted, not exactly the vertical height that we use to define the height of the cone, but just the length of the height that is slanted on the sides of this cone. So what we're saying here is that if we find the circumference of the base, which is a circle, and we take it by half and we multiply by the slant of the height, that's gonna give us our lateral area. But why is that true? Well, let's take a look at some relationships here. 
So again, here we have a small animation. So here we're going to start with our cone. So let's take a look at what's going to happen here on the left. So here we have our cone. And let's flatten it out just like we did with the cylinder. So if we flatten it out, notice that in orange, we still have the circle, which is the base. But now, right now, we want to concentrate on just this blue region right here. So if we continue to flatten it out, notice that this blue region is just a section of an area of a circle whose length is L. So pretty much the area or the lateral area of this cone is nothing more than the section of an area of a circle whose radius is of L. So how can we find this section area of the cone? Well, Let's go back to this because now we're going to take a look at some relationships. So I just define this section as the section ABC. I'm just going to need some, some lettuce so we can have a discussion about it. And I'm going to take a look at some relationships. And I'm going to start looking at the relationship of, of this arc AC. And what I mean by AC, I mean this arc right here. So is there a way for us to define the arc of AC? Well, AC, if we go back to our animation here, notice that this arc right here is nothing more than the circumference of the radius of the base, where if we flatten this out, notice that what is going to be arc, this arc AC is nothing more than just the circumference of a circle whose radius is r. Let's flatten it out so you can convince yourself that this section right here is the arc AC. So we flatten it out. Notice that yes, it is this arc. So since this is nothing more than the circumference of a circle whose radius is r, then we can define this arc as just being 2 pi r. Now, notice that there's also a different way to still define this same arc AC. Because this same arc AC can also be seen. OK, so let's extend this a little bit. Imagine that this is a perfect circle. Notice that this arc AC, it's also a section of the circumference of a circle whose radius is of L. And based on what we have discussed before, let's assign this angle to be theta. We also know that we can define this small section AC as follows. It's going to be the angle of openness over 360 times the actual circumference of the circle whose radius is L, which is equivalent to 2 pi L. Because 2 pi L represents the full circumference of the circle whose radius is L. And to get that small section, it's 360. I'm sorry, uh, the angular openness over 360. So now notice that we have two different ways that we can define this arc AC. So if they both represent the same arc AC, then therefore we can set them equal to each other. So now we have the relationship that 2 pi r, it's equivalent to pi over 360 times 2 pi L. In order that the two pi's will cancel on the left and the right. So now we have that the radius of the circle, it's equivalent to pi, I'm sorry, theta over 360 times L. And we're going to use this relationship in a second. So let me just do a small box on it. But now let's actually come back to the real question, which is, what is the area of this blue region? Because all we have talked about is just this little arc AC. But we have said nothing about the area of this blue region. So the area of section, and I'm going to call this section ABC, OK? Well, this, it's a small region 
of a circle whose radius is L. So therefore, I can define that area as theta over 360 times the full area of the circle, which is 2, I'm sorry, which is just equivalent to pi r squared. But the radius of this circle is L, so now this becomes pi L squared. And I'm just going to do a small algebraic manipulation here. So now, notice that this L squared, I can just define it as L times L. So now this becomes 360 over pi times L times L. And notice that everything is being multiplied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and put them on the front. So now this same expression, it's equivalent to pi L times pi over 360 times L. But why do I want to do this? Because now notice that this expression right here, it's equivalent to the expression that we define the radius to be of. So now therefore, I can come back to this expression and instead of writing theta over 360 times L, I can just define that as just being the radius of the circle. So now my full expression becomes pi L L or pi L R which if we wanted to fit exactly the definition that we give on our lesson, then this is equivalent to pi RL, which is half. Notice that this is the same expression as we got in here, pi RL. And now notice that that expression, it's equivalent to half of the circumference of the base times the slant height. So this is one way that we can define the lateral area of the cone. And of course, the surface area it is the lateral area plus the area of the base. But the area of the base is a circle, so it just becomes pi RL plus 2 pi R. So the last figure that we want to define, it is the sphere. And the sphere is being defined as follows. So the surface area of a sphere, it's equivalent to 4 pi times the square of the radius. In other words, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. But why is it that the surface area is equivalent to 4 times pi times r squared? So let's come back to this small animation that we do have here. So as here we have just a random sphere. Now, if we want to define the surface area, it will be better for us to flatten it out. So let's just flatten it out. So here we have a sphere. And let's start flattening out our sphere. And what we're going to do is notice that all we're doing here on our vertical axis, are we doing? We're just expanding what was connecting. Still, the surface, there is no centimeters that gets lost. All we're doing, we're just expanding it away from, this, from the origin. So we're just expanding it. And we're going to expand it in such a way that we're going to create some kind of a cylinder without the basis. Because notice that we what we can do here is that we can get our sphere and we can kind of like cut it in the middle and just start expanding it in such a way that becomes a cylinder. And I want to say in such a way that it's a cylinder because it's not exactly a cylinder because we're missing the basis. So here we have our sphere. Notice that all we do, we have just stretch it. And now that it's become such a stretch figure, what we're going to do, we're going to flatten it out now. And notice that by flattening it out, it becomes a rectangle. So we can think of the surface area of a sphere as being nothing more than the surface, I'm sorry, than the area of a rectangle. In other words, it is just sufficient for us to just find the base and the height and multiply it with each other. But if we go back to here. Notice that this is nothing more than the circumference of a circle, which we can define as 2 pi r. And the height, if we go back to our original sphere, notice that nothing gets lost vertically. So from 0 to 1, that's a radius. This From 0 to 1, this will be the radius of my sphere. So therefore, from the top all the way to the bottom, this is equivalent of 2 radius. So if we go back to here, to our so-called cylinder, I know that in this cylinder, the circumference of the circle 
is 2 pi r. And the height of this kind of cylinder, it's equivalent to 2 r. So if we flatten it out, the area of this rectangle, it is 2 pi r times 2 r. And if we multiply it, we get the area of the rectangle, which is 4 pi r squared, which is exactly how we have defined the surface area of our sphere. So this was just a small lesson illustrating the surface area and the lateral area for cylinders, cones, and sphere.